Hello everyone, here is our next unit, the Human Cardiovascular System, in our new unit called uh, bi Human Biology. And the cardiovascular system means the heart and the blood vessels. Cardio, heart, vascular means blood vessels. And in this case, whenever you see an image or a simplified drawing, veins are represented in blue and arteries are typically represented in red. And the main function of the cardiovascular system is, of course, to move around blood. And blood has many functions. In this uh, first part of the human biology unit, the cardiovascular system focuses on blood flow. So we're going to just focus on blood flow. Uh, we're going to look at blood pressure how blood pressure affects blood flow, how blood volume affects your blood flow, how blood resistance, blood viscosity or thickness, and uh, diseases and exercise, how they all affect your blood flow. Looks like blood flow is the common theme in this section. In this slide, you see I've animated the blood flow with the two circles. And you can see that the blood first goes through the lungs, and then it goes through the body. Here come the blood vessels going through the body, entering the right side of the heart, and the right side of the heart sends blood to the lungs. After the blood is oxygenated, it goes back to the left side of the body, and the left side of the body sends the blood to your entire body, your head and everything below that, your torso. I want you to keep looking at this flow. I want you to learn these terms. I'll circle them the lungs, right atrium, all the terms in this page, aorta, right ventricle, left ventricle, left uh, atrium. So all these simple parts, and you have to look at this because I have a little quiz for you. Um, it won't take long, it's not hard. You look at the blood as it's flowing through, and, and look at the name associated with the part as the blood flows through and then you're going to write those names down in order so watch this flow uh, i think i repeated it maybe five or ten times i forget but you can see as blood flows out of the right side it goes to the lungs and then from the lungs blood goes into the left side of the heart from the left side of the heart blood goes into the aorta which feeds your brain and everything below the brain we just have one picture here to show that. And then the blood goes in the veins back into the right side of the heart. In this slide, I've made the blood flow represented by a circle because it is a circle. It's a cycle. It's a closed system. I started off with the right ventricle. So you have to look at the previous slide to see the right ventricle. That's where the red little circles start. And then I want to know what's the next structure that comes after the right ventricle. And it's all labeled. So your job is to go to the previous slide, look at the animation, then see if you can answer A, B, C, D, and E. I've given you some hints of different parts. I need you to go to the previous slide and look at the blood flow, and then come back to this slide and find out what A, B, C, D, and E is. So when, when you do that, once you know what A, B, C, and D is, I want you to go and take the quiz in your, your Schoology class. It's the same as this one. It says, what's A, what's B, what's C, D, and E? And, uh, and you can prove to me that you are familiar with the blood flow once you turn that quiz in. It'll be due on Tuesday, 11.59 p.m., so it takes about a, a day I'll give you. It's so easy. So last, repeat. Go to the previous slide. Watch the animation. Translate those animation parts to this slide, which is represented by the blood flow is represented by a circle, and just look at each part that the blood is flowing through from the lungs that goes here, from here goes to the left atrium, and so on. And these answers can be found in that previous slide. Make sure you go to school, you take that quiz. Here we have the image, uh, a figure of the heart, as it, uh, with its external appearance and all the, the labels of the different parts of the heart. I remove that and now we see the inside which is what we want to focus on. We can see the aorta 
that's where the blood flows to the body, the head, and the down part goes to your, the rest of your body. The pulmonary artery sends blood to the lungs. Pulmonary veins brings blood back into the heart from the lungs. They pour their heart in uh, contents into the left atrium. Blood goes into the left ventricle through these valves here into the aorta, to the body. As the body spends the oxygen, it has to come back to the vena cava. The blood has to come back, dump into the right side of the heart, the right atrium, dump into the right ventricle, and the right, right, right ventricle squeezes and sends the blood out to the lungs, just like the uh, animation you watched. So you'll be responsible for knowing what the atria do. They send blood down below. What do ventricles do? They send blood to places. Um, they'll send blood. They'll send blood to the aorta here, and they'll send blood to the lungs. Two separate pathways. The pulmonary artery is here in blue. Sends it to the lungs. Pulmonary veins returns it from the lungs. I'm repeating myself. The aorta sends blood to the to the body, the head, and the lower torso. The vena cava return that blood back to the heart, dumping it into the right side, and the cycle continues. So these parts, I've given you what they do, and just be familiar with them. So we've talked about the heart, the blood flow pathway, and the fact that the heart starts blood flow, but the question now is, what is blood pressure? Blood pressure is the pressure that the blood uh, causes uh, in the cardiovascular system by pushing on the walls. As the, as the heart pumps the blood out, that big bolus or that big round uh, uh, flow of blood from the heart pushes against the walls, thus bulging it. And if you... If you ever feel your pulse, you could feel that bulging. That causes blood pressure. That, what, that's exactly what blood pressure is. It's the pressure the fluid puts onto the walls of the artery. You see that arrow up and down pushing on there. And it's important to have the proper blood pressure. Blood pressure increases when the heart beats faster and decreases when the heart beats slower. The normal blood pressure is 120 um, millimeters of mercury. That's a way to measure pressure over 80. That's a standard, but you can be above and below that and be safe as well. So how is blood flow then affected by blood pressure? Well, when you have higher blood pressure, that occurs because the blood vessels have constricted. Your brain have told, have told them to constrict or something you've taken have told your blood vessels to constrict. When they constrict, then they shoot the water, or the, they shoot the blood through at a higher speed. It's like putting your finger over the garden hose. And then the opposite is true when blood vessels open up and dilate, blood pressure goes down. Let's continue on with the theme of blood flow. And everything's about blood flow. So one thing that affects blood flow is the blood volume, the amount of blood that you have. We first can calculate the amount of blood that you have by measuring the total amount of blood in your blood vessels and the amount of blood in your organs as well. There's a lot of blood in your organs, uh, spleen, liver, and so on. So once we measure all that blood volume, then the next thing we do is we look at blood viscosity or blood thickness to see how that affects blood flow. So blood flow is our theme. How does the volume of blood affect blood flow? The volume of blood affects blood flow by measuring the blood viscosity or the thickness of blood. If blood is too thick, then it slows, excuse me, it flows slower. If blood has a lower viscosity, so it's not as thick, it'll flow faster. So blood viscosity is a direct measure of the ability to blood flow. And now, what controls blood viscosity? Your level of hydration. Are you dehydrated? Your kidney function. Are your kidneys failing? Because that's going to affect your blood viscosity. 
is there an imbalance of proteins compared to cells and that could be a disease situation or a diet situation and also how much cholesterol and fat is in your diet that will also make blood viscous and will cause even more stress on the heart um, if someone has too much cholesterol and too fat and that will slow blood flow and that could trigger heart attack actually